Okay, a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Good morning, first of all. Good morning? Are you there? Are you awake? Yes? All right, let's try again. Good morning. Ah, Dikwa. Okay. Each one of you should have a puzzle piece. If you do not have it, please raise your hand and our ushers will bring you a piece. Okay, raise your hand high so they can see where you are. Ushers, please give everyone a piece of the puzzle, including the people in the front row here. <laughs> And maybe some people over here, too. <laughs> Raise your hand if you don't have a piece so they can get you a piece. OK, we are going to talk about puzzle pieces. So you need to take your puzzle piece out of your pocket, hold it in your hand, because we will talk about it during the sermon. All right, everyone has a piece now? Almost, almost everybody. Okay, good. All right. Whoop. I need to move forward too. Let me tell you how I fell in love with puzzles, with jigsaw puzzles. Okay? Jigsaw puzzles are not popular in Thailand because most Thai people think they're just for children. They are not just for children. However, the only place that you can buy puzzle pieces in Thailand is B2S. And the only puzzles they have are for children. So we have a lot of work to do to get puzzles here for adults. All right. How did I fall in love? Well, my parents were missionaries to Thailand. And I was a young girl. When I was about 12 years old, we went back to the United States for a long visit and my parents decided on that trip that they were going to take a slow way to get to the United States. So they booked passage on a boat, on a ship, on a freighter. The name of the freighter was the Ropat. Now, because it was a freighter, it was carrying goods, not people. It's not a cruise ship, okay? There were no activities for cruise passengers. There were no activities at all, okay? There were just things, boxes and boxes and boxes of things in this ship, okay? There was a little tiny baby elephant, too. It was going to a zoo someplace. But that was the only thing that was interesting for me as a child, okay? We left Bangkok and we went to Genoa, Italy. It took one month, one month, do you know how long one month is for a child? It is forever. It's like waiting for Christmas to come. It takes forever for one month to go by. Now, I looked for other children to play with. It was a freighter. I did tell you it was a freighter, right? It had 12 passenger cabins. Or no, not 12 passenger cabins. It had room for 12 passengers. Only six cabins. 12 passengers. The Bryant family is six people. We were half of the passengers. The only children that I could play with were my own brothers and sisters. Nah, blah. Okay, boring. Because I'd been with them my whole life. I knew them, okay? We fought all the time. We are children, okay? The first day was very interesting because we left the harbor in Bangkok. We saw Bangkok skyline going away. It was very, very interesting. The second day, nothing but ocean. The third day, nothing but ocean. The fourth day, nothing but ocean. You get the picture, right? It very quickly got very boring. Well, one day my mother decided to go to the library. There was a little tiny library on this ship. Mostly for the crew, because, like I said, only 12 passengers. Ah, in the library, there was someone putting together a jigsaw puzzle. I had no idea what it was. And I watched this person for quite a while. And then my mother said, let's do this. Okay, what is this? Well, you take a box. Okay, here's the box. Whoops. You take a box, 
You dump all the pieces on the table. And then you try to figure out where they go. Do you know how hard that is? Did you know there's a method for doing it? My mother taught me the method. Okay, look at your puzzle piece. Does it have a straight edge? Yes? All right. Straight edge means edge of the puzzle. Yes! That's, then you know where that piece goes. It goes somewhere around the edge of the puzzle. Ah, two straight edges? Okay, corner piece. There are only four of these in the whole puzzle. After you get the border put together, uh, then what? Colors, right? You have to look for colors. Where are the colors the same? All right, I, we'll get back to this puzzle. We're not going to put together a puzzle today, but I wanted you to at least know that that's how I fell in love with puzzles. It was a way to pass the time for a month. I put together a lot of puzzles in a month because there was nothing else to do. Now, with that very first puzzle that my mother and I put together, we finished the whole puzzle. It was beautiful, except there was a piece missing in the puzzle. And you know, when you look at a puzzle and there's one piece missing, where do your eyes go? Do they go to the beautiful picture? No, they go to that empty space. Because you know that the puzzle is not complete because there is one piece missing. My mother and I looked and looked and looked for that piece. We got down on our hands and knees. We looked under the table. We looked everywhere that we could in that little room. And it was my sister who finally found the piece. It was behind the bookcase. It had slipped somehow behind the bookcase while we were putting the puzzle together. We found the piece, and yes, there was great rejoicing when we found the piece because our puzzle was finally complete. All right, I'm going to take you back for a while. Hold on to that piece. We'll come back to it. But now, let's go back to our Bible stories, right? Back to the Bible stories. All right. First story. Shepherd with 100 sheep. What happens? He counts the sheep and finds out that, oh, one is missing. What does he do? Just what we did. He leaves the 99 and he goes and finds to find that one sheep. Now, one thing you need to understand that in that day and time, those sheep were probably not his. He was just someone who had been hired to take care of the sheep. What would happen if he went home with only 99 sheep? When the owner of the sheep had purchased 100, what would happen to him? If he was paid, he would lose his pay, right? Until the sheep was paid for. Probably he would lose his job. So, was it important for him to find that sheep? Yes. His life, his livelihood depended on him finding that one sheep. So he left the 99 and he went and looked for the sheep. Okay, next story. Right? The woman with the coins. The woman with the coins. She has how many coins? Ten. Ten coins. One is missing. What does she do? She leaves the nine. And she goes and searches for the one. Why? Do you know how important silver coins were in those days? They were very, very precious. It's not like our one-bot coin today. Okay? Much more than that. And it was, I would guess, her entire savings. Okay? It does not say that this woman had a husband. If she did not have a husband, then she had no source of income. Maybe the coins were all that she had. And she had to live on those, on that money. One was missing. How important was it? 
It says in the story, she lit a lamp to go search in every dark corner for the coin. That means it was very important because oil was very expensive. For her to light a lamp and go search for the coin meant that it was so important that she would light a lamp in the darkness. In those days, people, when it got dark, it, they went to bed. They didn't light lamps. They couldn't afford it. But she lit a lamp and went searching for that coin because she knew that she could not sleep until she found it. And then what happened when they find the coin or the sheep? Here's what happens. The shepherd calls together all his friends and says, look, look, I found it, I found it. The woman calls together all of her friends and says, look, I, this coin that was missing, I found it, I found it. They had told everyone that it was missing. They had told everyone that they had to search for it. So they went and searched, and when they found it, there was great rejoicing. So do you see in the first story, it says there will be great rejoicing in heaven for a sinner who repents. And in the second story, it says there is rejoicing among the angels for every sinner that repents. A joyful, joyful story. Okay, what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? We read the story. And when you read the story, do you put yourself into that story? Who are you in that story? You have three choices. You can be the lost sheep or the lost coin. You can be the shepherd or the woman. Or you can be the, one of the other 99 sheep or the other nine coins. So let's take a look at each one of those and see what happens. Let's say that you are the lost sheep. You are the lost sheep. You're frightened. You're alone. You don't see anything around you that looks familiar. You don't know where home is or how to get there. Sometimes we're lost and we don't even know that we're lost. It's only when we try to go home that we can't find it. And then we know we're lost. And then the shepherd shows up. Oh, that sheep was dancing. You know that sheep was dancing when the shepherd showed up. I don't know how long the sheep was missing. Maybe he missed opportunities for food, opportunities to be with fellow sheep, because sheep are never alone. They're always in flocks of sheep. All right, let's look at coins. All right. Let's, let's decide that in this story, you are the shepherd or the woman. How important is the lost one, whether it's a sheep or a coin? How important is it to you? Is it important? Is it not important? For the shepherd, for the woman, it was very, very important. They could not rest. They could not sleep. They had to go and search. They had to go. Something compelled them to go and search because that lost one was so important to them. How responsible do we feel for those who are lost? Do we feel any sense of responsibility at all? And when the lost are found, do we experience the same level of excitement, the same level of joy that this shepherd felt, that the woman felt when they found what was lost? All right, third group. The third group you can be in, the other 99 sheep or the other nine coins. Did they care? What were they doing while the shepherd was out searching? Probably just grazing as usual. I mean, after all, they were surrounded by 98 other sheep. They didn't even know that one was lost, did they? They were with their friends. They were with their colleagues. Did they care that one was lost? 
No, because they were satisfied, they were happy, they were fed, they were cared for. Everything was okay for them. How about the nine coins sitting there on the table together, waiting for the woman to come back? I can't animate coins, they're not alive, but the sheep are. Okay. You can be, if you are one of the 99, you can be uncaring. In other words, this story doesn't affect me. I'll just go about my own business. Or I can be resentful. Hey, that shepherd, he's out there looking for the, hey, he's not taking care of me. I'm the one who's important here. Come back, come back, come take care of me. Ah, no. Or we can be very, very joyful. Look, my friend, my brother who was lost is back. We can rejoice. Right? So there's different ways we can be even if we are the 99. All right, you still have that puzzle piece? Yes? All right, take out that puzzle piece. Let's spend some time thinking about puzzle pieces. First of all, I want you to uh, compare your puzzle piece to the puzzle piece of your neighbor. Yes? Is it the same? Yeah, look at your neighbor's piece. Some of you are sitting very far from neighbors. Go find a neighbor <laughs> and see if you can see their piece. Is your piece the same? No, not the same at all, is it? You know why? Because we could not make this picture if all the pieces were the same, right? They have to be different, or there is no picture. God made us different, all right? All right, let's think about jigsaw puzzles. I'm going to suggest this morning that the completed picture it's nice that in the jigsaw puzzle box, they give you a picture of what it looks like when it's finished. Isn't that nice? Okay, in the pi let's suppose that today, this picture represents the kingdom of God in this world. The kingdom of God in this world, okay? All right, you have a choice. This little piece that you have, does it represent you, or does it represent the church, or does it represent a missing piece? All right, let's go back to the jigsaw puzzle and think it through. All right, let's suppose that this piece represents you, okay? You're looking at your piece, you're looking at my picture. Where does it go? Where does it go in the picture? Do you know? If this picture represents the kingdom of God in this world, where does your piece fit? Where does it fit? Now, there is something you know for sure. It fits somewhere, right? It does fit somewhere. There are no extra pieces in the box. So somewhere in the kingdom of God, you fit. You fit the picture. All right? All right. What part of the picture are you? Okay. And then, and then you have to ask the question, are you in the picture yet? Or are you in the pile of pieces sitting on the table? Right? Remember when we got the puzzle, we dumped all the pieces onto the table, and then we started putting the puzzle together. Are you in the picture? Have you been put in the picture, or are you in the pile that's sitting, and it's not in the picture yet? Hmm. Okay. Then, aha, next. How do you relate to the other pieces? in this picture. How do you relate to the other pieces in the picture? We already established that your puzzle piece is unique, right? Yes? 
We already established that each puzzle piece is unique. You as an individual are unique. God created you, not like anybody else in this world. You are different. But God needs you to be different or God cannot complete this picture. God needs you to be different. I know some churches where they want all the members to be the same, to do the same, to act the same, to be the same. No, that is not what God wanted. God wanted each one of us to be different because there are different, we have different gifts, right? Doesn't 1 Corinthians 12 tell us we have different gifts? We were given different gifts. What if everyone that's seated here now, what if we were all preachers? What happens on Sunday morning if everybody who comes in here is a preacher? There would be chaos, right? We'd be fighting over this microphone, for one thing. We'd be absolutely screaming and scrambling to be heard. But no one would be welcoming people at the door. No one would be collecting the offering. No one would be helping people find their way, right? God gave us different gifts. We have different gifts for a reason. Your puzzle piece is not like someone else's puzzle piece for a reason. Okay, next. Let's say the puzzle piece that you have is the church. This is the church, and you can make it Watana Church, or you can make it the whole Christian church in the world. Okay, I want to know, in this picture that God has, where is the church? Where is the church? Think about it. Where is the church in the world today? And the second question is even more important. Is it in the picture or is it in the pile on the table? We can have churches in the pile on the table. They just do their own thing. They don't pay much attention to what God is wanting in the world today. Because if they paid attention to what God is wanting in the world today, that church would be in this picture. Right? All right. Third thing. Next. This could also be one of the missing pieces, right? This could also be one of the missing pieces. First of all, how do you know that the piece is missing? How did we know that the piece was missing when we put the jigsaw puzzle together? There was a hole in the picture, right? Let me ask you this. When you look around at the world today, can you see the kingdom of God? Can you see the picture that God created? How do I know there's a missing piece? Because I can't see the kingdom of God in this world. I get little glimpses of it from time to time, but I can't see it. And then the question is, what is your responsibility? for that missing piece. Maybe the missing piece is on the table. Maybe it fell behind the bookcase. What is your responsibility to find that missing piece and help them to get into the picture? All right. There's bad news and there's good news. The bad news is I didn't come here to answer these questions. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just here asking questions, but I didn't come to answer the questions. However, there's good news too. The good news is this. When we are in a relationship with God, God answers those questions. God answers those questions for us. Usually by asking us to do something because we can't sit idly by. Okay. Last. I do not know what the picture of the kingdom of God in this world looks like. But I do know that I can't see it. And for that reason, I know there are missing pieces. 
and I need to help find those missing pieces. That's my responsibility. And I hope that God will help you find out what your responsibility is. Because the final question is, what will you do? May God help you as you search for the answers. Amen.